So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's Motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back, ladies and gents. This is another instalment of the podcast Under the Stairs, bringing you Silent Night from 2012 in pieces. That's right, we're taking beloved remake Silent Night from 2012. We're splitting it up into five-minute reviewable segments. I'm getting podcasters from around the globe to join me on those five minutes. And we're going to break it down. We're going to go into some of the baffling choices made in this movie, but hopefully we put over how bloody entertaining it is. Joining me on this episode to discuss minutes 5 through 10 is dear friend of the podcast. It is one phenomenal lady. It is Lacey Lou. How's it going? Hey, happy holidays, Mr. Duncan. (laughs) I know. um, These things come around quick. I mean, just like time in general (laughs) just comes around really quick. I believe we're almost in December. This is upsetting insane right yeah well, the year feels like it has evaporated in front of my eyes it's the like we spoke obviously we did one of these i was gonna say earlier in the year it was like about a month and a bit ago and even then i was like ah oh, i mean december's ages away and i remember saying at the time i was like the next one's gonna be silent night but we're not recording that until the end of november and we're all like ha, 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 ages <laughs> away um and here we're here and that literally feels like we spoke like couple of weeks ago so insane you however were posting earlier on on the internet that you very much like myself and probably not a lot of the internet have a lot of time for this movie um has that always been the case were you did you see this originally when it came out or have you came to this later on and as such those expectations of this being a kind of direct remake to silent night deadly night were removed and as such you could enjoy it more um, well, I hadn't seen Silent. Ugh, I can't even talk. I hadn't seen Silent Silent Night, Deadly Night. Um, mm. um, until we covered it on uh, Slumber Party Massacre. I think it was two years ago, and oh, I made wow, everybody. Right. Watch, I made everybody watch them all. I think they might still hate me for that, <laughs> but uh, we covered it in our pillow segment uh, debate fight. So, um, of which one came out on top? Mm. I think. I think the OG one, and I think this one came in second. So, oh wow! Uh, I think if I'm remembering correctly, because there's some really bad ones in this. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes off. The, <laughs> it goes off the cliff pretty quick. <laughs> like it's not even Christmas. Um, <laughs> oh wait, actually, I think part five might have won. The one with the 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 doll. Hey, that's um, part five. Yeah, that's the final one. I think the toy maker. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that one might have won. <laughs> The, the, the thing about uh, them is they're weirdly inconsistent movies and the sequels had less... To, this is the thing that's always baffled me is the sequels had less to do 
with the actual original story. So when they came to remake it and they remade it as ostensibly a different movie, people got upset about that because it was somehow breaking the the the, the spirit origin and through line of the franchise. And I was like, there is no spiritual through line to the franchise except Santa Claus. That's literally it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, see. So I had seen this one before those. So oh, I right. rent, I rented this one like when it came out. Was it 2012? Yeah, 2012. 2012. Yeah. So like I had rented it, but I don't know if I like ever finished it at the time. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I didn't like give movies more of a chance until after like 2013 for some reason. <laughs> like when, like Facebook groups became like a thing. Yeah. 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 And yeah. So like my horror like i was always like a big horror fan but like i became more vastly like into all of much i i, I know a lot more now thanks to facebook i guess it's the one good thing from it yeah, I, I, <laughs> so. think, I think it's i think it's easy to like something it's difficult to like something and not have a community to share it so yeah. I, I think that's I think when people talk about the negative impact of fandom via Facebook or social media, I get that. I see it. I understand it. But it's also a great opportunity to allow people the chance to get into things as well that maybe they wouldn't have before by having communities of like minded people point them in the directions of certain movies or tell them things to check out or you like that movie, you should check out this one next. Those sorts of things you know, 20 years ago didn't exist. So you purely saw what your friends wanted to see at the cinema because you didn't want to go yourself. Um, right. And, you know, you were kind of almost ring-fenced by what your local theatre or cinema would show. And as a result, you only kind of had a very... I've spoken, I think, about this with you before. Like, my knowledge of slasher movies was always what the big slasher movies were. Like, all the kind of off-the-beaten-track ones, which are huge in America, your sleepaway camps, etc., were not big in the UK. They did get released here, but they weren't like, if you see one movie, you know, it was never, it was never those lines. And it wasn't until I started, like, doing podcasts with Americans and they were like oh man have you, you've never seen Sleepaway Camp oh you need to you need to check that out. you're gonna love it it's you know and you started getting all these other movie titles recommended yeah. over here that we would never well it's not that we would never have seen only a tiny group of people would have seen in this country had it not been for internet groups making them popular enough that labels then put them out so what would you say was the biggest um franchise over there out of like the big ones like that was most widely talked about um of the big ones it's gonna it's gonna be probably nightmare on elm street even above oh, wow. yeah, even expecting... above halloween um nightmare on elm street is huge in the uk I, I mean friday the 13th is as well but because i get the feeling that things that involve summer camps which are not really a thing in the uk for obvious <laughs> reasons our summer is like is like your winter, uh, pretty much. It's like the weather isn't great, so those sorts of things don't really exist. So the idea of kind of predicating your killer based on like at a summer camp that doesn't resonate the same way as something like a Nightmare on Elm Street does, which is all about dreams. So and everyone dreams. So like that has more impact. Things like like Texas Chainsaw Massacre is almost rolled out straight away because Texas Chainsaw Massacre wasn't released officially fully uncut in the UK until like 2002 so That's yeah it was banned for for a long time right through the 70s so you know it, it's hampered and like part two would have been the one that most if I saw part two before I saw part one so you know like those sorts of things Halloween for sure to, to a point but it was never like the first one for sure but things like part three weren't big titles like Season of the Witch was not a big title in the UK. Um, it wasn't a big title in the USA either, but didn't have that kind of fandom kind of pushing it. Um, and then even if you take a step back and you look at something like Hellraiser to an extent, maybe with the original run, just because it's Clive Barker. But yeah, I, I, I would probably say Nightmare on Elm Street was probably the biggest one. But then you get all the ones that are kind of off the beaten track that maybe made the video nasty list so some people saw them but then they were banned like titles like the burning 
are on the the, on the bad list for 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 banned movies from the video nasties. I have never seen the burning. You know, you I think you'd really like the burning. Um, it's it's gnarly, it's gnarly, but it is fun, and it's just a, like a rogues gallery of people that would go on and do. It's, it's like you know how you see like Kevin Bacon pop up on Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Oh, that's Kevin Bacon. He wanted to do huge things. No one else did. Um, like when you watch <laughs> the burning, like at least four of the main counselors all had careers that were prominent, which is just oh, weird. Wow. You don't usually have it that way. So yeah, I, I I don't know. Like to me, like a Silent Night Deadly Night is a movie I didn't see until. I was in the it was, yeah it was like it was like late nineties early two thousands and I only saw that because I was working in a video store at the time so um, I don't know if I would ever have kind of come across that before um, the sequel I didn't see until I was I used to do like kind of kind of comedy radio show with some Americans um, and. I used to do a segment called Duncan Defends and the listeners would pick a terrible movie and I had to courtroom style defend the movie using five <laughs> exhibits and like my acumen and charm hopefully to win over and I got landed this one and they were all like right defend this shitty remake and I went away and watched it and I was howling with laughter all the way through it. I thought this was the most entertaining Wait, thing ever. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I brought it with with my five clips I brought there. And uh, by the time they did the kind of poll count of all the listeners, I don't think anyone voted against me. <laughs> like I was just like, how do you not want to see this movie after listening to these five clips and me explain actually what happens in the movie? Um, it's too you much. bring that back. I, I keep like the thing is I keep joking about doing it for the for the longest time I've joked about doing it, but I think there's a level of where those movies know like there's there's movies that are defendable because they're fun, and then there's just legitimately bad movies, and I know what my <laughs> listeners are like. And they're just gonna find the ones that are indefensible, <laughs> and then, and then you, just, you basically have to spend whole seg like whole segments like once a month just watching terrible movies. <laughs> like, you know, what I mean? I'm getting on, Lacey. I'm I'm getting on in my age, and time is precious. <laughs> you know what? I I voted or I put in requests on each of your polls for your mm. Christmas episodes. I was so upset. None of mine got chosen. <laughs> Um, a ginger dead man would have been amazing. I, I, I genuinely thought you had that. I, I like, see, as it went on the list, I'm like, I know what the listeners are like, I know how they vote. The fact that Near Dark went out in that one boggles my mind. I'd like, I don't get it. I don't like that. It should not have happened. Ginger Dead Man should have won because Baz has never seen it, and that would have been a hilarious review. He would hate it, it would hate you as well for picking it, but um, it would have been infinitely more entertaining. I just think. We're going to end up watching like a really good vampire movie, and he isn't really going to have that much to say about it. He's just like, "No, oh, this is really well done. Oh yeah, that scene was really cool. Yeah, this was this is awesome." And I'm like, "Yay, that's an entertaining show." Um, <laughs> so 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 glad that we did this, listeners. Um, so um, you landed two segments. If I'm honest, okay. without the most action, they're very dialogue heavy. And you are legitimately within spitting distance of a kill in both segments, <laughs> which I felt really. I sorry. know. <laughs> I did get the title sequence, though. You did like you, this, and this particular episode here, we the the opening of the five minutes has Silent Night on the screen, and it slowly turns <laughs> red and blood. And I was like, well, I mean, that's I mean, we're we're here. We've started it. Um, let's let's roll through this one here. So, All like right. I say, a lot of dialogue here. Some comments because some of this is absolutely amazing, and McDill's accent is <laughs> just as a masterclass. And let's try and work out what part of the world he's from. Um, so it starts with Silent Night bold on the screen. Uh, we have our deputy, our, our um, protagonist here. She's in bed. The phone is ringing. She leans over, sleepily she picks up and she says hello. And then McDill comes on, up and at him, deputy. And she's like, <laughs> like, Sheriff? And he's like, I need you at the station at 1500 hours. Which, I mean, why is he waking her up? No, <laughs> you know what I mean? I need you at the station 50, uh, 1500 hours at 3pm. And he's waking up, like, does she live far from town? <laughs> I, I just, I, you know, what I mean? it just is so fucking strange. And then you also have to take into account 
she doesn't walk into the police station until three o'clock, right? Which means <laughs> everything that happens in this movie is between three o'clock p.m. and presumably midnight, which is not a lot of time, and a lot happens. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> put that, to, <laughs> put that to the side. She's picking apart this movie straight away in the first line of dialogue. Um, she's like, "Wait, what? That Deputy Jordan's got my shift." And he's like. This is fucking amazing. It's like they almost didn't write this script for Malcolm McDowell. It's like, Jordan's MIA. She's like, wait, what? And he's like, no one's seen him since Thursday. <laughs> so it's not Thursday. He's trying to do an American accent, but this is Malcolm McDowell. English theatre actor Malcolm McDowell. So it's no one's seen him since Thursday. Apparently, <laughs> he's apparently he's Gonzo. What the fuck is this script? Out of here. Got a whiff of something he couldn't pass up. Oh, wow. <laughs> he meows on the phone. Just like, like no, apparently not pissed that Jordan's went MIA either. He's just gonna like ride fucking poor Deputy Aubrey into into oblivion here. She's like, sir, I can't work. It's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve for all of us. The season of giving. So get off your sorry ass. Town hall's expecting a record number of setters. It's gonna be a real clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the script is fucking. I personally, I personally love that um, phrase. Cluster what fuck? cluster? Clusterfuck is a great phrase. It is an interesting okay. phrase to hear come out of once again, classically trained English actor Malcolm McDill. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <it's like, laughs> oh man, he did those Halloween movies, and then everyone. And like every slasher director was like that. You know what we need in this movie? McDowell. <laughs> right. And the thing is, he's really, I've mentioned this before, like one of the only reasons I like Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is the Loomis performance. I think like the kind of heel turn of McDowell into a, oh yeah, I, like, I had a near death experience. I'm just like, I'm. you know what? I'm going on the road and I'm selling my fucking story. Is genius. <laughs> now I'm a gritty cook. Yeah, like it's total genius because that to me is that's what happens. Like especially in t like if you're modernizing that story, that's what happens in today's age. Like you are, like you have a PR person. As soon as you've survived a tragedy, you have a, like a team of media people behind you saying, "This is what you see. <laughs> this is how we sell the rights. This is how we get a book deal. This is how the movie's been made. This is who's going to play you." Um, if you're lucky, you can appear in a rap video. You know, it, like it's, it's like it, that's how, like let's get you on TikTok. That's literally how that is done. So the fact that like <laughs> the, the fact that they get McDill's Loomis character to totally do that makes sense to me. But like him playing this, his character is like the sheriff of a sleepy town where nothing happens except the uh, wait one second. If you watch this movie, the maniac santa with a fucking flamethrower 40 years before that no one talks about no one talks about he doesn't apparently know anything about it um but it's just like a sleepy quiet town this is like the, the town in gremlins right this is a sleepy quiet town and mcdowell is bitter about that because nothing has happened and he has wasted his life away and as a result he gets all sassy he uses words like clusterfuck as if he's like in a 1920s <laughs> noir. Um, and it's just absolutely amazing. And he has zero sympathy for anyone. And I kind of like that. But he's like, well, I'll do it. And she goes, eh, it's, it's Christmas Eve for all of us, cluster fuck. And she's like, with all due respect, sir, today's a really tough day for me. It's the first Christmas without John. And he's like, okay, well, I'll look forward to seeing you. Like he's just, he's just like, he just like, hangs up on her. Just like, <laughs> for, and then we get we get we get the deputy's morning routine, which is kind of amazing because she gets up, a big good old long stare in the mirror. She gets dressed, another big long stare in the mirror. She does her hair. She then sits down. She's like, you know what? It's crossword time. She's a little crossword sitting on the edge <laughs> of her bed. Um, she gets stuck on. A six-sided item with nine letters, which we will solve before the end of this movie, so don't worry, guys. Um, and she hears her dad come home. 
there's something weird about our dad, but we'll get to it. Because um, like, our dad's revealed, <laughs> not that much, like, the order of these is all over the place, Lacey, so we can talk about anything in this movie, right? Our dad is revealed to be the guy who kills the Santa at the end, like, from the flashback. And apparently he has went the other way. <laughs> he's really, like, he's went completely zen and dedicated his life to just being the happiest, jolliest Santa lookalike <laughs> um, on the planet. Uh, and he's he's like, uh, I'm home. And she runs downstairs and grabs him in a hug. And he's like, I'm innocent. I swear, I swear. Police brutality. Help, help, help. And I'm like, this is a, <laughs> like a grown-ass policewoman. And you're talking to her like she's like a child. That's how I talk to my kids. And none of them are 10 yet. So it's... I, like it'd be okay like it'd be okay if that was the end of that but he continues to be like that all the way through the entire conversation at which point I've well, written maybe here, she, I've wrote, maybe she wrote, really wanted him to be her daddy <laughs> oh, I've just written here I'm like that um, this relationship is weird <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> literally all I've written here um she, he's like uh, she's like daddy sorry I can't be here tonight but you understand He's like that. It's okay, darling. You write as many parking tickets as you want for all those other wannabes. And then look up for me at that throne. And she's like, oh, dad, that'd be cheating. Wouldn't it, mother? So it's not mum. It's wouldn't it, mother. Daddy and mother. It's just like, are we in cycle right now? Um, <laughs> she's like, she's straight as an arrow and I'm proud of you, kiddo. So like, oh, thank you. And then we get the first tease of something, which would be great if it was in your segment, but it's not. Um, the mother's like, "There's a, there was a gift in the mailbox for you, Hank. And he's like, oh, give it here. And she's like, hey, daddy, what's a six-sided item? And he's like, a cube. And she's like, no, it has ning letters. And her dad's like, a hexagon. And I'm like, that, her dad can't count. Because that's <laughs> literally got seven letters. Well, she corrects him. She's like, close, that's seven. I'll figure it out eventually. Anyway, good luck. And I've written here Chekhov's crossword puzzle. <laughs> like, like this is like gonna this is gonna be a plot device somewhere down down the road here, and it is for trauma. Um, she's gonna work this out right after she murders someone. <laughs> oh man! Like, let's power through this dialogue here because it's 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 getting tedious. Um, she's like, uh, he's like, um. She's like, close, it's got seven figures, I'll find it anyway, good luck. Dad says, I'm not going to need it, this is going to be my year. And I'm with him. He looks like he's ate a lot and cultivated a beard to be Santa. And by, <laughs> by God, he's put that training in. I'm going to do that next year. Um, he's like, you be careful out there, hon. And she's like, of course. And she's like, you promise? And she's like, of course, mother. Because she's still referring to her as mother, which is weird. Um, and her dad says, and you watch out. And this is like a kind of cute cutesy way to say this <laughs> when he's basically talking about molestation he's like that you watch out for all those drunk santas with the wandering hands and no letting them off with just a smile and a slap on the wrists not my girl <laughs> like if you if you get handsy with a cop you 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 go to prison or you get shot it's like one of the two like i don't think there's any middle ground um i won't let you down dad and then we move on and um, Deck the Halls is playing, which is a great tune. It's an absolute Christmas banger. And when it comes on, I sing it like out loud and my dogs howl, and my singing voice, and my kids leave the room. And uh, it's just driving up. And there's just a lot of people dressed like Santa. Where you are in the world, is there a Santa con, Lacey? Is there a what? Like a Santa con. Where like people all dress up like because in New York they do Santa Con, which is there's a five k fun run for Santas in Central Park. I know because I was over in New York when it was happening one year, and uh, the people that we were out with, who are also podcasters, um, had basically told me that because I was like that is such a cool thing. People dress up as Santa, they go run, they're like yeah, 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 and then it turns into St Patrick's Day because all these Santas go and get drunk, and then at ten o'clock at night you're just seeing people in Santa costumes vomiting in the street, like like sickness in their fake beards, and they're like, it's just carnage. So it makes me wonder: does everywhere do, like do all 
like American towns have a Santa con, and I'm taking it from your a what that yours does not. <laughs> Um, we have like a parade, um, but Ooh. I've never actually been to it. Um, we have a Thanksgiving parade and a Christmas parade and a St. Patty's parade. I've never actually been to a parade. So um, the one year that I had taken time off of work to go to the parade, we actually got shut down for COVID on St. Patty's Day. Oh, God. So, <laughs> so um, I was so fucking excited. I had the whole day like mapped out. I know this isn't like Christmas, but... Um, yeah, I had the whole day mapped out of going to the St. Patty's parade. Um, I had my whole outfit and then I was going to end the night. We're, we're going to go to bars and then we we're going to go, um, cause they're showing boondock saints at the theater. And, oh, wow. And like, I had my whole day mapped out and we got <laughs> shut the fuck down. It sucked, Duncan. So, um, and had I liked that parade, maybe I would have gone to a Christmas one eventually <laughs> after, but, uh, Just put there might parades. be a bunch of... There might be a bunch of Santas around, but typically I drink on uh, Christmas Eve, mm. so I'm not really out and about on Christmas Day. <laughs> um, so I get, um, it. I get, it. I, I do the, I do like a, a reversal of that. I drink a lot on Christmas Day. I don't leave the house on Christmas Day. I am um, like my drinking starts as soon as I get up, and then I'm responsible for making dinner for for the family, which I do every year. And I've realised that you got it. You got kids. <laughs> yeah, but I've realised the earlier I start drinking, the better cook I am. I'm already a pretty good cook, but like I like for whatever reason, my timings are shit hot. The more drunk I am on Christmas Day, <laughs> don't know what it is. I think it's I, th I think it just takes the pressure off of having to make sure everything's cooked right. And for whatever reason, when that pressure's off, it, everything's just cooked right. But uh, yeah, Christmas Eve, I I cannot afford to wake up on Christmas Day hungover because kids. So. Right. <laughs> like, can afford to do it on the Christmas Day. Dad is <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not as good as the the dad in this. Like I'm not trying to be Santa and sitting on a throne, um, or doing crosswords with my kids or anything. I'm just like, ah, let's do presents. And you sit over there, and Dad's gonna get a drink. Um, and that is literally <laughs> me. So you don't have a Santa con, but you do have a Santa parade potentially. Well, and well, my Christmas mission, parade. Yeah, my mission to you is. For the next time we speak, you must try and go to your Santa parade. My Santa parade. I love that you're just calling it a Santa parade. It's a Santa parade. parade. That's literally all Santa. In my head, it's just a march of Santas. It's like a military march, but all Santas. <laughs> oh, well, technically, we went to um, this year... We thought it was going to be a lot longer. We went to the Fourth of July parade. Actually, you have been a parade but, then. You've literally been. Uh, well, well, but the thing is, so like I got the time wrong. So <laughs> as we like arrived to said parade, um, the last parader was going through. <laughs> so, I love, I love your description. Was we thought it was going to be longer than it was, and it, it wasn't that. It was just you were late. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, I will send you the video and it is literally the entire duration of how long we were at this said parade. And it just this, um, and it was a 4th of July parade. Didn't see any fireworks, nothing. Um, didn't get any candy. Um, it's just this in this um, Native American guy banging on a drum. And there's like every, and you can just see like everybody dispersing and leaving. Oh God. So that that is the extent of me being at a parade. Yeah. So I, I don't think that counts. I, I think if anything though, that's like, that to me feels like that's what she, a Thanksgiving parade should just be that. It's like a, one solely like lonely Native American guy banging a drum. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, while everyone else leaves. Um, <laughs> it was for Independence Day though. Yeah. <laughs> made my recording honestly oh so um, <laughs> so she's driving down deck the halls is playing uh, as she's pulling up the, there's a man decorating a tree poorly and she's like nice job mr mayor and he's like pardon me she's like the lights it's quite a display and he's like pain in my ass but we're entertaining tonight and mrs mayor has her standards and i'm like does no one refer to their partners in like a sensible term like mrs mayor 
well, you know, Missy's mayor. And I'm like, no, no, that's not you. Unless your surname is mayor and you are the mayor because you've, <laughs> like, it was preordained destiny that if you had the surname mayor, you had to become the mayor. You should never refer to your wife as Mrs. Mayor. Um, and Deputy's like, so you're not judging the Santa contest then? He's like, no, 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 it's an election year. If I choose a Santa, I earn one vote and lose the other 499. And I'm like, this town is small. It's only 499, 500 men? Is that, is that what we're saying in this town? And people aren't travelling from out town, so every man in this town dresses like Santa. It's a weird town. Um, and then <laughs> Tiffany comes out. And dear God Almighty, Tiffany comes out. And uh, the deputy's like, Merry Christmas, Tiffany. And she's like, hey. <laughs> and he's like, Tiff and like, the mayor's like, Tiffany, will you please go and put on something more respectable? And she's like, respectable? What would you know about respectable? And I'm like, oh, scandal, scandal, scandal. And the mayor's like, ah, more important. <laughs> have important people coming over tonight. And then Tiffany goes all eco warrior. And I kind of respect her for this. She's like, you might think it's cool for you and your important people to route a road through protected land. I don't. And I'm like, you tell him, Tiffany. Get your top off. And she says, like, <laughs> I added that in. Um, the mayor says, this town will die if we don't put another road in. And I'm like, this is literally psycho. Uh, absolutely amazing. Um, and Tiffany's like, it's already dead. And then the deputy's trying to do anything to get out of this scene. So she's like, all right, I'll see you at the Santa parade. And the mayor's like, you take care. And the scene literally closes like mere seconds before a kid is about to eat a cattle prod but um we kind of <laughs> kind of spin round to the outs kind of outside of a house and then inside a woman is trying to open her bottle of pills and that is end of the scene um <laughs> lisa you had a lot of excitement in this one a lot of death a lot of murder a lot of highs a lot of lows some would argue that this is the most exciting scene in the movie um, yeah, I, I, I can see that. I mean, I think everybody aspires to, I mean, come on. <clears throat> For some reason, I forget every time I watch this. Maybe it's because the Santa Claus, the Santa Claus mask kind of looks like Malcolm McDowell. Mm -hmm. I always think he's the fucking killer. <laughs> so, like, like uh, my brain does not compute that he is not the killer. Sorry, spoilers. We don't know where this is coming. But I always think that he is the killer. In fairness to you, the reveal of the killer is a character that you never see in this movie. So, like, right, like, but so they you, make it feel like it's a whodunit. Yeah. Well, that's why I think you're okay to think that. You're okay to go into this movie having seen it at any point in your life and think you know who the killer is because the movie doesn't care. <laughs> the movie doesn't care. Does that the mask why... not look like Malcolm? Of course it does. Of course it does. Look like him. The reason it's not Malcolm McDowell is they, they say that he has a size 13 foot and he must be over 6 foot tall. And at that point, that's not Malcolm McDowell. But if you've seen him like early in the movie, I can see that. I can see right. that. I'm, 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 you, you know what? They should have made Malcolm McDowell the killer in this one. What's his motivation? What? The town is so boring and so quiet, he literally had to do something to make it exciting. And think about it this way. He uh, he comes up like he's having he's going through the old archives. He comes across an old case that happened in the town where a Santa murdered people with a flamethrower, and he thinks I could do that. And what are you? Let's you don't rewrite think this that bitch. A town that has four hundred Santas is yeah, an it's the perfect town. disguise. Listen, Lacey, me and you're going to write <laughs> our version of this movie. We're going to pitch it to Hollywood, <laughs> and it will get made. Blumhouse, if you're listening out there, we're coming for you. And we gotta have a, a Native American guy banging a drum at some <laughs> point in there guy. too. <laughs> Just one guy in the Santa Parade that's a Native American man banging a drum <laughs> as everyone leaves. Right. <laughs> and people people like, well, like that that's like that's our meta scene where we wait, wait, nudge, nudge, like we get the joke and no one else gets it. No one else gets it. <laughs> um I like that um you clearly can tell by like characters in this. Of who's like gonna die like as soon as you meet them <laughs> like i mean i i didn't get any of those scenes in my two segments here but when oh, i don't know tiffany out... tiffany looks like she's ripe for death when she comes out <laughs> wearing that outfit i'm like that she's if she doesn't die she's going to escape a killing just, <laughs> just. I mean? um 
Yeah, no, for real. And then um, I like how the mayor, Mr. Mayor, yep. um, doesn't want to pick a Santa as the winner <laughs> because it's going to interfere with his Christmas politics yep. of not getting reelected because he'll only get one vote. <laughs> Like also, I also, like, also he like to think, like, what, what I love about this is he does it every other year, so he doesn't care every other year, like, people aren't going to hold a grudge. Right. He didn't, he didn't fucking give me it last year, did he? I'm not voting for him. <laughs> like, who else is running against him in this town? Oh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, like having looked around this town, no one. Like, like, it's the most incompetent town I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh man, yeah, it's uh, it's just like to me what steals the show here is just McDowell. Oh, like McDowell's, you know, like uh, yeah, you know, it's gonna be a real clusterfuck. Are you like he got a he got a whiff of something he couldn't pass up? Meow. Meow. <laughs> 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 so you know, apparently he's Gonzo. I'm like, this is the best. That just give me this as a movie. Just give me a whole movie where we follow this character, and I am a happy chappy. Um, Lacey, let's bring this in here. Uh, you're yeah. a busy person. You do stuff out there. You also have another segment, which oh, me have already played because these are all out of order. Um, but you, you're a busy person. You do podcasts. Where can people check out your stuff? Um, under the cut to the chase feed, uh, wherever podcasts are found, like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, which um, there's like a plethora of shows you can check out. Cut to the chase, Slum Party Massacre, Skip to the Loo, the last one. Amazing, amazing! Thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gents. You are getting spoiled this month, every single day between the first and the twenty first. Sorry, the first and the twenty fourth. You are getting an episode of Podcast Under the Stairs, which means by the law of averages, there is one dropping tomorrow. So until then, take care and I'll speak to you then.